Hello guys, welcome back to the final part in my Z50 restoration. In the last video we got the wheel sorted and you may have seen in the background that this frame and engine was, was starting to come together. But in today's video we're going to run through the whole thing. We're going to go from engine frame mating to the full finished products hopefully running. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get straight into the action. So guys, this is... What I've been waiting for for a long time and I'm sure anyone watching the series has been waiting for this but we're going to finally start doing this assembly for this bike so we've done all the parts we've been working on this for 10 months now and we're finally going to get to the point where it comes together so first off we start with the engine and getting it mounted on a nice bench or a stool it's just a nice way to lock the engine down and have it fixed so we can build off that um, make do, you could probably do a proper engine stand, but this works well. So, the first major piece of assembly, and that is placing the freshly painted frame onto the engine. There are two bolts that locate onto the back and top, as you can see here, and they just keep the frame in place. Really simple, and the engine essentially hangs off of the frame. So, we're following no guide or manual in terms of reassembly. I'm going for what I think is the most logical. So, with the frame on, we can start bolting all the small bits on. I start with the grommets. So, they're the grommets for the wiring harness to pass through and the grommets that locate the side cover. Uh, a bit of silicon spray on all of them and they drop into place nicely. Following that, I go for the swing arm and we put a new swing arm bolt in. Um, if anyone watched the first ones, I found that this bolt was actually bent where it had taken an impact at some point, so brand new bolt there and it all looks straight. We can then move forward to some electrical parts, so the HT lead, the spark plug cap and the coil get bolted on, they sit right in the middle of the bike so it's a no brainer to get that on early. Now I have to say this is probably one of my favourite parts to the restoration and that was a new frame VIN number. Yeah. Um, this came from Switzerland. I took a photocopy of the old one and sent it off and what came back was a perfectly original aluminium stamped plate. So it was great to get that on and I think those little touches make a restoration just that bit better. So lovely to see that going on. With the kickstart rubber in place we moved to some engine side components and I thought let's get the sprockets on. So the sprocket goes on and there's a small locking locating tab so that goes on with the two sprocket bolts super easy and nice to get in the first place and then an interesting job not a fun one was tidying up the wiring out of the stator so there's a small wiring harness bundle and what I did was took the vinyl off switched these grommets over because one was all corroded and nasty so we got a fresh grommet on there passed the wires through and then we vinyl tube tubed it so it was all nice and tidy. Next on was the exhaust which was nice and easy. I gave this a coat of paint and polished up the chrome so that's looking really really good and ties in nicely with the bike. A few bolts that held that in place so we nipped them up and moved to the rear end. So these are the new shocks but because you cannot buy these with black springs I stripped down a new set, sent off the springs powder coat in and then reassembled so we delic delicately put these back together because I did not want to scratch that Let's fresh see paint. what we have got, what's happened, where it's come, where it's been and the things we've got to put together. So starting up here we have got all of the tank, forks, fenders, side cover, front fender fully painted in the original Tahitian red that came on the 1978 Honda. Down here we've got the old wheels and we've got as you saw in my last video these fully refurbished wheels, so that's new tyres, sprockets, I think the rims were new, the full works. Moving around here, we've got odds and sods and everything in between. We've got painted brake levers, handlebars, we've got old spares in there, a manual, our seat, which we're hopefully going to try and recover, and the fork internals. There's also one more box, which I'll dig out next, which has all our finished bits in it. And lastly, one of the final bits to this puzzle, a kickstand. Something you think is really simple, but for this year of bike, getting one was a pain. Now, I'm pretty sure this will not fit straight out of the box. I think I may need to do some modifications to this top end, but it's a Honda part, 
and I'm going to make it work because this thing, although tiny, will be a pain without a side stand. And I thought it's important to show this paint in the light because it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, the quality, the gloss, the finish on this is top notch and I'm very, very happy with it. And you can see this is like looks like new, so it will be great to get these parts on. So after wrestling on that gear lever, we move on to the next big job, which is tackling the front forks. So for those who have seen, these were estate when we first got them, and we're going to transform them to better than new. So we got those old forks over here. We've started taking those apart, and we're just doing one at a time so we can make sure we get the new parts in the right place. We've got our new fork lowers, grommets, cups, seals, plastic, so a spacer, then you've got a bush in there, a uh, bottom bar spring mount, spring and a top mount, so that is what it looks like exploded, and we're going to now attempt to get that together, if one side goes well, we'll smash out the next, and then we're ready to get those in the forks, and button those for that front end up. So here we are running through the fork assembly, um, as laid out, I'm literally working my way from the bottom up, so we get the firstly the boot on and then the next lower collar and like I said we're going up slowly we're applying grease where needed so it all slides together nicely and then knocking the pin in with the bushing so on standard forks it doesn't actually come with a bushing here but over time these forks wear and you'll find even with a rebuild kit you get sloppy forks so these are worth getting they normally come for the CT70 but they are a great addition to stiffening up your front end now I would say it took me a few hours to get these stripped down and built up. A lot of the time was spent on the first fork leg working out how they'd go together and the best way to do it. But we got to this point and this is for the first side but the whole leg is assembled and we slide it up into the body of the fork and then simply a bit of grease on the threads and you wind that cap up into the fork and that holds it all together. So we'll skip now to the finished forks as it's exactly the same thing to do the other fork leg. It is so great to see these forks all restored and looking awesome. So with these done we open up another bag of parts and this will be for predominantly body panels so let's get into that. So guys we have got the forks all sorted now so they are fully rebuilt and ready to go back onto the frame. Next up, to get a bit of weight over the rear end, we're going to grab the rear fender. So we're going to get this rear fender and install new bushings, bolts, uh, inserts and get this thing built up and then bolted on. Now I have to say, one of the things that I definitely overlooked in this whole restoration process was the smaller parts and pieces that you need to do a good restoration. All of these grommets had been sitting in the sun and being used and had the moisture taken out of them, all sorts of things. So you find that all the little bearings and bushings are knackered and you need to go around and replace them. Two things, it takes a long time just finding out what you need to order. And secondly, it's actually quite expensive because by the time you buy all these OEM parts, it adds up. But I have to say it is extremely therapeutic putting fresh parts onto these painted panels. And... With the paint panels and the paint comes threaded holes. So you can see here, just to save us the pain down the line, we're gonna run a tap through all the painted nuts so we know our bolt fits nicely. And with some great care, and by great care, I mean just taking our time and making sure we don't scratch it, because it's so easily done, we slide the fender in and line up the holes. There was a bit of jiggery and moving and kind of, we had to, pull it into place but that's because it's so old and there probably are some small bends and slight movements in parts but it looks good and it's great to get that on it balances the bike out so we can then move back to the front end where we look at the forks so you've seen there we've just greased up the headset and the fork tube that's just to give it a good covering of grease and then we slide in the mighty restored forks and get them in their place back on the bike for the final time Next to go on the bike are these two small tools. They are essentially a spark plug socket and these came 
on original from factory with the little holder so we've bought some new ones to put on the bike because this is a nice little touch so it's exactly as it would be at the factory we also then remember to tighten up the rear swing arm bolt i left this loose the whole time and i thought now's the time to tighten it in case i forget along with all the grommets that perished there was a load of these small plastic tie bands which were also cracked and worn away so they were really cheap and they just make the restoration that bit better so we replace all of those with nice white ones you can see originally they were going yellow and now they're back to white and then the headlight bowl we get that in place but it is short-lived this comes back off at some point because i realize you need clearance to get the top mount on for where the handlebars mount so it's good to check that it fits but it will come back off now i want to take a quick minute of everyone's time and say that if you are enjoying this video and you've got this far and plan to watch the rest of it, I'd really appreciate if you drop a like below on the video. It'd be even better if you can subscribe to the channel. There's going to be plenty more content like this. I've got another build lined up, literally ready to go. So it would be great to yeah, have you follow along, join the channel and see what we get up to next. But that's all. Let's get back to it. So we got that rear tail light built up. And I have to say, this bracket was a pain to get. There's no OEM parts, so it had to be a reproduction one from America. So getting this part alone was a proper pain. But you can see, I am dead happy with the end result. Right, a quick update of where we're at. Front end coming together nicely. Headlights on with our new bolts. At the back, the rear light is on. All new hardware. Plumbed into the wiring loom. This is the OEM light, so they're not cheap, but the quality is just perfect, so that's lovely. Um, whilst everything's off, I am sanding a small area for the coil ground. So, obviously, don't want to paint your ground, so sanding it off now to get a good ground, whilst that's all about. And our top yoke here is outside drying, as I've given that a coat of satin black. I've come this far, so I thought, let's make sure it's all perfect. And... Aside from that, I think we'll get that done and then look at fitting some wheels. As mentioned, we sorted the ground for the quill and that may be a bit overkill, but I would rather make sure there's a good path to the chassis. Um, sometimes it's easy overlooked and I'd spend, if I didn't get a spark or whatever, I know that I'm covered, so it's good to get it done. Um, following that, I go to the front end and get the fender on. So once again, this part could not be bought in the right colour. So we bought a chrome one and had it painted in the right colour. So right, guys, we're gonna get the front wheel on the bike now. One thing I have noticed is, obviously you saw me build these forks and the springs are all rotational. They should bottom out, but they don't always fall in the best position. So what I've noticed is that my fork leg actually is turning into position. I don't think that will be an issue because everything's locked in place by your top bolts and by these caps here I think it's just essentially compressing the spring slightly more so hoping that's not an issue obviously first time doing one of these so learning as I go but wheel fully sorted as you've seen bolt gonna grease this up and then try and get it into place I'm just waiting for this top yoke to dry um, the lack is drying on that and then we can start building up from there so wish me luck let's get this thing the wheel to a rolling chassis She spins, a bit of brake noise, but that'll go as the as the drum bed in. But yeah, nice, happy with that. Looking good. Following the front wheel, we head to the back and stick the freshly finished rear wheel on. Very similar procedure, but much easier. There's no pivoting fork, so there's literally just a through bolt, spacers, and some chain adjusters. But that goes on really nicely. Give it a spin and it's spinning nice and straight so good news now another cool big moment is getting the tank on the bike this really kind of brings home how long it's taken because this tank has been off the bike for so long so it's great to get it back on and looking more like a monkey bike right guys both wheels on tank is on 
and it is actually starting to look like a monkey bike so pretty chuffed with how it's coming out just taking my time being very careful obviously the paint's very shiny and new I'd like to keep it that way for a, a little while but yeah here's a look around of where we're at, at the moment and I'll keep you updated in this next bit we're going to spend all our time working on the top end of the bike so this consists of this top plate which has now been painted and looking great the top bolts which hook into the fork and obviously our stem nut our compression nut for the forks so that goes together and then we bring over the main fixture the main clamp body for the bars you can see that one of these cool features on these bikes is that the handlebars fold down so if you were to transport a bike you can undo two handles and then fold these bars down so this is the hardware that locks the bars in place and that's what allows you to unscrew tighten unlock and move the bars around so you'll see here these slide into a groove and then our fittings come from the other side and pinch it together so it's a really cool design and it was used on all the monkey bikes but it's one of the standout features and what made this bike so usable for people to transport and stick in camper vans or back of your car or wherever needed and one of the nice things I managed to do was keep all of the original switch gear so it was tempting to go and buy new ones but I thought let's spend the time so we cleaned them down we restored the plastics so we blackened the plastics back up and I think they look good obviously they are not completely perfect but I think they're really nice for this restoration and it's nice to keep as many original parts as possible similar with the throttle we've stuck with the standard sliding design which is a, a very cool design bit different I haven't seen anything like this but it's robust and I can see how it's lasted so long very mechanical and yeah a cool thing that Honda did after spending the time assembling that it was working really nicely nice and smooth and the throttle cable moved back and forward as expected so we then move on to the brakes so the front brake is a which drum brake front and rear but for the front we've got a cable that runs down to front wheel nice and simple once again we've kept the original brake cable but cleaned up all the moving parts which looks really good and yeah this is dead easy um, reminds me of a push bike brake where you've got the adjusting nuts to apply tension to the cable and at the top we've got our brake pivot bolt nice and easy with a lock nut on the bottom to stop it backing out and that is your brake setup or your front brake together so quick spin and locks up nicely that will bed in and get better so we are starting to make some serious progress on this bike now and we're getting to the nice bits where lovely little jobs so we've got a brand new chain DID chain and that is going straight on the bike so wrap it round and this is pretty standard for all bikes but it's slightly long so we mark it work out what lengths we need and mark this for cussing as mentioned at the start of the video we had the seat to tackle and I thought a lot about this whether we could keep the original vinyl and try and bring it back to life but I decided that the best thing to do would be to get a new seat cover and just go through the seat thoroughly and reapply it um, I think no matter how much I try to clean it or coat it it just wouldn't be the same so yeah we went about and started ripping this old seat cover off felt like a crime doing it but it was part of the process and needed to happen Right, so our rebuild is coming along nicely. As you can see, the parts are bolting up and it's all looking really good. I want to give a quick update of where we're at so you can see where the bike is now and there's a few things that I've been waiting on, sort of last minute jobs that are needed. Take a bit of time, but we'll make it really good. So one of the things we're doing is tackling the seat. So obviously you saw the original seat and the seat cover, it was knackered. I thought we'll quickly recover it. So I bought a recovering kit actually once I stripped it down the foam is just about salvageable but the seat base needs some love so this is gonna get blasted and painted and then we're gonna try and save this seat foam to cover it we've got a nice leather seat cover so I'll film myself putting this thing on and getting that sorted and then final part wise we've got fuel pipe and clips so hoses to hold it in place We've got a P-clip, which is quite interesting. I'll cover that in a minute, what that's for. 
and then finally the main thing we have been waiting for which is a headlight so I originally ordered a headlight but actually ordered the earlier model the K1 K2 this is the K3 so this came from the Netherlands um, CMSL website really good and yeah that's a nice OEM part that we're going to fit up now so let's get these last parts fitted and then we're going to touch on that p-clip what that's for and what that replaces because it's definitely not original and we'll go into the seat and then we'll go back to hopefully a finished bike so let's roll into that so for lighting you get a front headlight and a rear tail light and they are operated via a single switch which literally turns them on very very simple 6 volt system and the harness that accompanies this bike is also very simple one thing I did do to make this process a bit easier was get my multimeter out and just make sure that the power wires for the light were in the right place and they were working and there was no broken points or anything this is an original harness recovered so I thought let's make sure it's actually working before I go ahead and plug the light in but aside from that it's some bullet connectors on the front headlamp and then you press it into its housing here I managed to not align it properly and have the thing fall out. That was very, very a near miss. But then after that we get it seated properly and fitted up and it looks great. Makes such a big difference having the actual headlight fitted to this bike. As I'm sure a load of you are aware, sometimes getting parts of these old bikes can be a pain. The stock of these parts are pretty good. There's a few things that you just cannot get. One of them which this bike never came with was the air filter bracket so you can see now stick on the screen um, the air filter bracket has a little mounting point at the top and it's designed originally for a bracket to clamp around the frame here like a two piece bracket and clamp around and then you would just keep the air filter in place like this isn't massively structural I think it just stops it vibrating and backing out of the carburetor because we cannot get that I had kind of two options I was thinking first I'll design one and 3D print it but it's a bit of an awkward surface, it doesn't sit perfectly around a cylinder or the top frame tube so I decided to go with a P-clip. So I bought a 50mm P-clip off eBay and I've folded this tab round so that will essentially pinch around the frame. So as you can see this is going to sit around here over this frame. It's got rubber straps so it won't mark it and then we're literally going to clamp the frame like that. And that's just going to add a bit of support for the air filter. Wouldn't say it's 100% necessary but it's a nice thing to do at this point. So let's literally get a bolt for that we'll have to find a bolt that matches nicely and get that bolted up for this little modification we start with a bolt and we chop it down to length obviously it's two tiny bits of metal you're trying to squeeze together so you really don't need a big bolt so cut a bolt and then the p-clip here you can see and actually I haven't realized but in the background is maybe the next project I won't I will not confirm nor deny if it is but that might give you an idea but yeah we get that on the p-clip in place, a bolt through and just get it tightened down. Um, as mentioned it is nothing structural but it ties it all together and that's how it's meant to be from the factory. With that p-clip fix looking great we start moving on some jobs that will allow us to run this bike and I started with the tank and giving it a good clean out. Um, brand new tank, they come with a slight film of oil in, it's just a good process to clean them out, uh, check the fuel tap, make sure it's all nice and clean and then reassemble and tighten it up so um, good thing to do we get some fuel in there and just slosh that around and pretty much I'm just making sure that when we do go for this start it is as smooth as possible and we've covered all bases um, so easy to have a look when you're excited about running a bike but do it now and then it's so much easier when you're getting it running The tank's just been flushed, so obviously it got painted and it sat for a while, so the guy who painted it put a tiny whiff of WD-40 and a thin oil inside it just to stop it rusting, so that was really good of him, but obviously before I run it, I want to make sure that the inside tank's spotless. So we've pulled the stopcock out, filled it with fuel, swished it all around and just drained it out and given it a good clean. We've also blown the filter out with some braking clutch cleaner, so any little bits of residue or paint or stripper, whatever is used to paint it, aren't going to make their way into the carburetor. So the effort was on, our tank's in place and next up is the fuel line. So I've got some fuel line. At the moment I don't have an inline fuel filter so we'll run the length of fuel line from point A of the tank to point B of the carburetor and then when a fuel filter comes we will literally cut the line in the middle, maybe chop a little bit out and drop our inline filter there. So 
nice and easy, but a good job to get done. So yeah, let's get that fuel line on. To spin the, the stop pet cock or the stop cock round, just so that we're pointing in the right direction. I think because this is an aftermarket tank, um, it's not 100% ideal, but I prefer the look of that. Like It's nice and tidy, tucks it out of the way, and yeah, I just think that's a bit better. So we're going to run with that for now. And I Fuel pipes all buttoned up, which I'm really happy about. It looks nice and tidy and the clips work well. We're kind of moving towards these finishing touches now. So we've got new grips, Honda OEM ones. The old ones are in okay condition, but it's a no brainer to put new grips on when you've gone to this extent. I'm only going to put the left hand side grip on purely because the throttle linkage, I just want to make sure that when I start the bike, it works okay. I don't want to put the grip on and then up having to peel it off and ruin a nice grip. So left grip on now. We're going to use the trusty took a bit of a hairspray. Hairspray purely because it lets it slide on and then we'll set and be nice and solid. And yeah, we're kind of getting to that point where we need to see if it works and runs and yeah, which I'm excited about. So grip on, mess around with the seat and try and start it I think. We whip out the can of trusty hairspray and give the grip and a bar a quick uh, soak in that and you can see the grip slides on really nicely. You gotta make sure it sits the whole way home but once you wipe off the residue and let that dry for a bit, they go solid and they are not moving. So great way to do that. As mentioned, I'm only doing the left hand side and we will do the right hand side once this thing is running sweet. As were replaced on the frame, we are also replacing the tie bands on the handlebars. If anything, these are the best ones to replace because they're the ones you actually see. The one on the frame is tucked under the tank out of the way. But we add them on quickly and then I do some really simple engine adjustments. So I'm just adjusting the clutch to the correct position. So when I do start it, the clutch will work as intended. And next up is valves and timing. As it's been a while since we rebuilt this engine and it's sat for a while, we're gonna go over a few things because on the first start, I just wanna make sure that we've covered everything and nothing was left. So right now we've popped the side cover off so you can see your stator. We're also gonna take these tappy covers off and do the valve clearances. So the valve clearances, I've done the top one, the intake, and that was actually really, really tight. So it's a good thing I did check. We're opening them up to 0.05 millimeters. That's both intake and exhaust side. That's what's recommended for the Z50 engine. Um, so we're going to do those valve clearances and then we're going to do the points. So simple checks that you can do and it's just going to give me yeah, the most chance of getting this thing running and starting first time. So last few checks now really before we get the seat on and try and kick this thing over. So get this buttoned up and we'll move forward. The process for adjusting valves is very common. You have a rocker and you have a lock nut and then you can adjust the clearance, so I've got a feeler gauge in there, my ring spanner, and I'm using a pair of pliers to twist the square adjuster. But really simple stuff, follow your manual and it makes a big difference. But now the most changing part, the big bike changer, the way it looks, um, and that are the tank stickers. These I got from America, got them imported over purely because this bike was only sold over there, so no one in the UK would make these stickers. But we mark some tape for the bottom line and then place them on carefully. Um, they look absolutely brilliant and literally transform the bike with one sticker. So it actually is looking like a nice Honda original. Um, same for the rear sticker. We've got the Mini Trail 50 and that goes straight on to that freshly painted cover. So yeah, this looks epic. With all the main stickers on, it was time to finally get the bike on the ground and off the stand mainly so we could put the side stand on and start working on things and getting closer to starting. So got the bike down and had a helping hand just holding it up whilst I fitted the side stand. Obviously, like I mentioned, this needed a bit of tweaking, so it was a bit of a trial and error. We got it on there and adjusted and working well. Now, this is uh, something that's 
optional. A lot of people don't do it because they prefer it without, but I thought it would be cool to have the original safety stickers on the bike as well. So this is about your fuel, wearing a helmet, like here on the swing arm, the exhaust, and I think it just gives it that nice factory touch and looks really cool. So guys, quick update. It is Boxing Day and I thought I'd get in the workshop and spend the day getting this thing together. So we've had a good tidy up and this is what we've got left to fit. So we've got brake lever, the brake sort of connection point. We've got some fuel guards, braids, which are quite handy. Found them, I'm gonna put them on. And brake spring and right hand grip. And finally, for the seat cover. So Literally, we're going to get that buttoned up, which will be good. Seat cover's there. What I've just been spending the time doing is working on the kickstand. So, I bought this kickstand, and it's not for this model. It's for the K2 model, but we've made it fit because these things are impossible to get. So, I've turned down a, a lock nut so it's smaller so it clears, and now we've got a nice solid kickstand with the correct spring. So, that is now safe and stands on its own. Really making our way through these jobs now and one job which I was keen to do was the rear brake setup. If you remember in my previous video we had an absolute nightmare with this brake bin with it being the brake lever being seized to it so it was really refreshing to rebuild this bike and I don't know my repairs have paid off it's OEM and it looks great but we start assembling this starting with the brake point and then we work on this rear connecting rod. Um, this is a bit of pain actually because Ideally, you'd fit it to the wheel prior to it going in the frame, but we got round it by loosening the rear wheel off, and then you put your clevers pin in, a few split pins, and you can see it moves up and down, and it's got a lovely feel to it. Um, nice spring back, and yeah, works really well. To finish the rear lever off, all we need is a washer and a split pin to stop that brake lever sliding off the bike. Um, took a space off the shelf, took a bit of material at the inside so it fits nicely and polished up and it looks awesome so that was a job well done now we are popping the oil off and we're going to get some fluids in this bike for the first time always very nerve wracking because you don't want it to leak but it was also satisfying putting fresh oil in a fresh engine is always great so filled it up started with a bit less than usual because i wanted to see if it's leaking so we stuck 500 in and we're going to go from there It's now that fun but nerve wracking point where we've just stuck the first 500 ml of oil into the machine. Um, I'm going to let it sit now, total's 800 ml but give it 10 minutes just to make sure it's not pissing out of anywhere stupid or I've missed anything before we put the full amount on. And then we're going to drop the exhaust tappy cover and take the spark plug out and kick the engine and make sure we got oil up to the cylinder head. So that kind of verifies that we've got oil in the engine it's being pumped by the oil pump and that it's in the places we want. So yeah, we'll let that sit and then we'll kick this over. So guys, as we get closer towards first start, I'm gonna cover some more on the no spark issue. So now as we stand, I actually do have a spark and I think there's a few reasons I didn't. I think firstly, there was, my points hadn't been cleaned. I took the points off the bike and then put them straight onto this refurbished one without really paying much attention. I think now that I've blown them out, I've put some contact cleaner in there. The points are much better. The gap was right, so that makes sense. But before we go any further, I wanna take a look at this little setup I've built. So as per the manual, there is a small static test fire kit you can kind of make so i've got two double a batteries in series literally taped together a wire on the end of that and then we've gone to a six volt light off my other bike which you will see hopefully soon in another video i've nicked that light there a broken light but it has a six volt bulb which is good because this system six volt off of this we have a spay terminal and that spay terminal can plug straight into the black wire of our stator and this is pretty much the black wire is what gives power to the coil for spark. So this is the one we're interested in. Um, so we connect that all up and what we find is that when we ground the wire here, 
and we have this light you can see very much I hope you can see that is just lit up very dimly and what we can do is spin the engine over and you can see look we're generating power and when we look at our flywheel we have a T mark for top of the center and an F mark for fire when we hit fire what we look for is the bulb dimming so you can see there we are at coming up to firing point and the bulb we hit firing point and the bulb dims and what that's telling us is that the timing is correct because the points are opening as we hit fire so it's allowing current and voltage to pass to the coil which will then in turn give us a spark so this is a really easy quick test that you can do and you just make sure that before you try and kick it over you're going in the right direction so with that validated I'll show you the spark we're getting and then we'll try and kick it over right something that's been taking a while is the seat so we took the seat pan and it was a bit worse for wear so that got, bl that got blasted got ground back cleaned acetoned prepped and um, one thing I did do which I thought was quite cool was there was an original number paint on the bottom so I masked that off before I painted it black so we'll take that off and I think it's quite a nice original touch it's a shame to paint over probably something that's put back on in the factory in 1978 um, as for the seat foam it does look a little rough but the actual shapes there and I think this will be absolutely perfect for what we're doing the main improvement as I may have touched on, is the seat. So we've got the seat cover, um, nice seat cover, and that will really transform the bike. So that's what we got up next. For anyone watching, please don't be fooled and think that I am any good at doing this or I've done it before. This was my first time and with a bit of patience, it's very easily done. The seat covers fit extremely well and as long as you take your time and make sure you pull the material tight, you'll have no issues. And it's a great way to fix even if you just want to finish your bike nicely and tidy up a seat cover 40 pounds makes a massive difference but you can see we stretch the material over and we're hooking it around onto the seat base frame and um, there's a small pointy tabs that stick out where you can hook the material and then pretty much you put your pins in the side and yeah you're done from that point I made it look easy but it really is and then from there we can put the seat straight onto the bike and bolt it in place which actually physically is one of the final things to be done with the seat on there's nothing left else to do but get some fuel in this thing so we put a cup of fuel in which actually goes really far and we kick it so i'm going to be quiet whilst we see what happens on this first start Typical fashion, as soon as I got the bike started, the camera died, which is a bit of a pain because I did get very excited and talked a bit about the running. You could clearly notice and hear that it was idling high. Um, one of the reasons I left the grip off was so that if we had any idle issues, we could adjust that. You saw earlier in the video, we actually put a spring into the throttle. It's a sliding throttle and I thought I wanted to snap back. Um, I've just pulled it out. I haven't started the bike since that clip you just saw. So we're gonna try and get this idling really, really well and running nice, and that will be the end of today's video. Next video, we're gonna get it on the road, test the gears, take it up the street on a dry day and see how we get on. So that'll be the final part. So guys, that is the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me do the final assembly on my Z50A project. Uh, next up, as I mentioned, we're gonna be tuning the bike, taking it up the road, and seeing how it actually performs. But for now, I'm gonna leave this video on the bike idling 
and give some clips of that. But hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.